Hi everyone, Sasha here from Mountain Pass Performance. I hope you're all doing well, and I'm happy to be looking at some data from a 24 performance, thanks to Chris, who uh, we have to give a big congratulations to. Uh, he's a real go-getter. Got a data logger in the car, the same day he picked his car up from Tesla, took a drag racing, brought his 21, had his brother drag race the 2021 side by side so he can really capture the difference in speed. And thanks to having the data from both cars, I can spend some time with you here to kind of go over what we see in depth so we can kind of stop speculating and, and you know, keyboard arguing with each other all over the internet. So when you're looking at here at the data, you can see the gray lines are from the 2021 and the colored lines are from the 2024. The first thing I have to point out is you need to ignore the gray lines down here at the beginning of the run being very low. It's not actually that the blue car, the, the 24 launched faster. It's that the data logging hadn't started yet on the MoTeC because it's, it's triggered to start logging when the driver floors the accelerator pedal and there's a bit of a time delay before that starts. So um, just trust us that the data is lined up here and you can see at this point, the cars are more or less going the same speed. Now, the first thing that we notice right away is that the battery power is much higher at higher speeds with the new performance. So the peak power at around 85 kilometers an hour is more or less the same as the previous car, but where that would really drop off, we now have up to 20% more power. So here at 180 kilometers an hour, uh, the new the new car has 20% more power, and that's all from the rear drive unit. So that's uh, really, really awesome. Now, the, the same goes for the battery voltage sag. It's the same battery, so as you'd expect, when the current is the same on both packs here, around 1,300 amps, there is about the same voltage on the battery. So that's good for Chris's 21. That means the battery is in pretty decent shape. And at higher speeds, however, you can see um, there's quite a bit lower voltage on the new car because it's still drawing 200 amps uh, more than the than the older car. Um, so yeah, it's really encouraging. The main complaint we all had about this, the Model 3 performance, was the, the drop-off in power at higher speeds. And so I think most corners at most tracks are usually coming off around 100 to 150 kilometers an hour. And so you'll have, on average, you can see here, 65 kilowatts more power, so almost 100 horsepower more coming out of every corner that'll carry you all the way up to in excess of 200 kilometers an hour here. Now, Chris did have to let off on this run early. Um, the the run in the video, we don't have the data from, and this run was, was he simply had to let off early to not get kicked out of the track because um, it's a 10-second car without a roll cage. So... Pretty cool for the price of the car. Now, uh, looking at the torque split, we can see that all of that extra torque is this purple line here. That's the rear motor torque and the blue line and this corresponding gray line is the front motor torque. So you can see the front motor is more or less the same as the old car. So we're getting all of that extra torque from the rear motor, which, which is really great. And that really gives a nice increase to the torque split. Um, as you know, the if you've been on the track with a Model 3 performance, it's always had a lot of uh, front tire spin trying to come off of corners, and that's made for a lot of understeer and, and kind of a car that's difficult to get a really nice balance on. So while you'll still have that much torque on the front axle, and, and it'll actually be a bit worse now because you've got more weight transfer, we, we hope that uh, the tuning of track mode and also the fact that you've just got more torque on the rear tire will balance it out to be a more of a four-wheel slide type of situation compared to just blowing off the front tire. Um, but nonetheless, you do have 30% more rear torque than you did before. And so even if the front motor pulls a little bit of power, you're still going to have a really healthy drive off the corner. So really excited to start driving these cars with sticky tires on the track and getting some mountain pass parts on these things. And I think you'll find... Um, not so much just because of the additional power, but also because it's it's all on the rear tire. That uh, I think you'll find that these cars are are about a second a lap, uh, a second per minute. I would say faster than the old car would be would be my guess uh, until you get into overheating of the battery, 
which will occur even sooner because it's the same battery with, uh, with a lot more draw at higher speeds. So there you go. That's your first look at the differences between the 24 and the 21. Thanks so much to Chris for gathering this data. We had to spend some time formatting it to bring it into the MoTeC i2 ecosystem here from the scan my Tesla, but it's a, it's, it's a pretty good look. Some of these graphs are filtered and smoothed out because the data wasn't super clean, but uh, this is a good glance at everything and I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks again, Chris, for getting out there with your brand new car.